أعوذ بالله السميع العليم من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله إن الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنختدي لولا أن هدانا الله والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين محمد بن عبد الله عليه أقدر الصلاة والتسليم وآله وأصحابه ومن اتبعهم إلى يوم الدين وبعد ما جبس الإسلام I greet you all with the universal grace of Islam and that is Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuhu. Today, inshallah, I'm with you from Yonkis Live, New York City. And the program at hand today is going to be on, uh, it's going to be a rebuttal actually to um, a priest, the, an Indian guy who's been on Facebook and he was talking about he used to be a Muslim and he was in uh, Islamic school for 10 years or, or more than that. And he was learning about Islam. He studied fiqh, he studied uh, sharia, he studied the Quran and the hadith, and he knows a lot about Islam and everything. And he was born into that Islamic community. And so um, eventually, uh, as he was, um, you know the guy I'm talking about, right? Um, he's, he's an Indian guy, you know? Um, and he was interviewed by some woman, and it's a lot of people asking me to report that guy and to report whatever he was saying. Well, I did the rebuttal uh, a few years ago, but I did that like five, ten minutes rebuttal, eight minutes rebuttal here and there. But uh, I've been doing that and people still need some more. And so today I'm going to be rebuttaling a lot of things that he said and I'm going to give uh, uh, answers to almost everything that he brought. But I hope time and space will allow us to do justice to the topic. And uh, inshallah, uh, we're going deep into the topic right now as I'm speaking. Okay, um, uh, like I said, he... Um, he claimed that um, uh, he was uh, a, an imam and he was given a special masjid, a place of worship for the Muslims to take care of. And so as he was the imam of that masjid, uh, one day, you know, somebody asked him, uh, uh, who was Jesus? And um, he said, Jesus is a messenger of God. Jesus is one of the mighty messengers of God. He was a prophet. Uh, he was sent to Bani Israel. Um, and then the person asked him again, so who was God or who is God? And, uh, uh, somehow the person, uh, alluded to the fact that maybe that Jesus, uh, did a lot of creation himself and he did so many wonderful things. He walked on water, he did miracle. And so far, none of the messengers that came to earth have done that. And so based on that injunction, uh, he was God. And so, uh, uh, that Indian priest, he said, at that time, I decided I'm going to study the Quran even further. He's very uh, cynical. I mean, how could this man who claimed to be uh, an Islamic scholar, who studied fiqh, Nahaw, mantik, balaga, Arab, hadith, and he speaks Arab very well, according to him, all of a sudden, he's been reading the Quran all of his life because you've got to be an iman, giving a whole masjid. You should know exactly who Jesus is and how the Muslims look up to who Jesus actually is in the Islamic uh, community. So he said he went and um, and he uh, studied the Quran again. I don't understand that part. To know who Jesus was, he studied the Quran again. And in doing that particular study of the Quran, who Jesus is, he realized that uh, the Quran mentioned Jesus 25 times. And Muhammad is actually mentioned uh, four times. And the word Ahmed, referring to Muhammad, is mentioned one time. So it means Muhammad is mentioned five times as opposed to, um, you know, uh, Jesus Christ was mentioned 25 times. From that angle, he deduced that uh, Jesus Christ is greater than Muhammad for the simple fact that he's mentioned 25 times in the Quran. Muhammad is mentioned five times. But uh, what he refused uh, to or he didn't understand. See, I don't believe from the beginning that he was an imam. Absolutely not. I don't even believe that he was given a masjid to take care of, to be the imam of the masjid. I don't believe that. I don't also believe that uh, uh, when he was asked who was Jesus, then he have to go back to the Quran again. An imam who speak Arabic very well, know about the seerah of all the prophets, he should give an answer to it. But he said at that time he went back again and researched the Quran and reread the Quran from cover to cover, he said. And then he realized that Jesus Christ mentioned 25 times. So from that angle, he said, okay, well, then uh, Muhammad five times, Jesus Christ 25 times, he, you know, so Muhammad might be, uh, Jesus might be greater than Muhammad, according to him. Because he was, so, well, if that is the argument he's trying to make for the fact that Muhammad is mentioned five times, Jesus Christ mentioned 25 times, Jesus definitely is greater than Muhammad. That's what he said. Forgetting that, 
Moses is mentioned over 118 times in the Quran. So in this case, is Moses greater than all the prophets because he's mentioned more than almost all of the prophets? Is he greater than them all? See, we don't think like that. Okay, and then again, um, uh, Satan is mentioned more than Jesus Christ. It's mentioned many times, about 95 times in the Quran. Does it mean Satan is greater than Jesus Christ for the simple fact that he's mentioned more than Jesus Christ who was mentioned 25 times? We don't think like that, Mr. Mr. I don't know his name, that priest. You know what I'm talking about. And so uh, we don't look at that uh, mention of the name and stuff like that and to say uh, John the Baptist is mentioned more. Isaiah, Jeremiah, these prophets were mentioned more. Some of them mentioned more than Jesus. Does it mean that Jesus is lower than them? How, what, what kind of criteria is that? You know, what are you talking about? So now we understand from the simple fact that the reason why Jesus Christ is mentioned more than Muhammad in the Quran is simple. We know when Muhammad was born. We know who his mother was. We know who his father was. We know who his uncle was. We know the kind of love that he led before he was commissioned to become the messenger of Allah to preach for the whole of mankind. In the case of Muhammad, the Quran simply said, وَمَا مُحَمَّدْ إِلَّا رَسُولٌ قَدْ حَلَتْ مِنْ قَبُلُ الرُّسُلٌ Muhammad is no more than a messenger of Allah. Many were the messengers that passed before him. مَا كَانَ مُحَمَّدٍ أَبَا أَحَدٍ مِنْ رِجَالُكُمْ وَلَكِنْ رَسُولُ اللَّهُ وَخَاتِمَ النَّبِئِينَ Muhammad is not a father of any of your men, but he's a messenger of Allah and the last of the Prophet. So Muhammad is mostly called the messenger of Allah, the Prophet of Allah, the slave of Allah. That is his appellation. That is Muhammad. And so that's what we believe all the Prophet were. None of them is below or above the name that Allah have given them. Messengers and Prophets sent to guide mankind. But in the case of Jesus, after he left the earth, there was a lot of there's still a lot of confusion about his personality. Was he God? Was he son of God? Is he trying God? Was he God man? Did he became a man and then he gave up that Godhead and then he became a God? When he became a God, then what happened to him being a man? So, okay, if he is a man, then he's supposed to be born by a human. Okay, Mary gave birth to Jesus Christ. Okay, now she is the mother of God. Then all of a sudden, who created Mary? So this is a lot of confusion. Some said he's dead. Some said he didn't die. Some said he, he just passed out and he un unconsciously he came back again. Some said he was on the cross, but he didn't die. Some said he was on the cross and died. And then, so there is a lot of confusion about Jesus Christ than about Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa There is no confusion at all about Muhammad. So God Almighty go out of his way to explain to us Mal Masihu Isa Budu Maryam Rasulullah Kat Hadat Min Kabulu Rusul wa Umuhu Siddika most certainly Jesus Christ is no more the messenger of God. Many were the messengers that came before him and his mother was a righteous and godly woman. Jesus Christ is being mentioned a lot in the Quran to showcase who he actually was as he walked the earth because there's a lot of confusion around his name. Muhammad, he doesn't have sallallahu alayhi wa There is no confusion about who Muhammad was. And so therefore, it is absolutely clear to everybody, just like any other prophet. But after Jesus, there's so many confusion. At the time that Jesus Christ walked the earth, the first century Christians, they believed he is a messenger of God, a mighty one, but not God. Later, theology began to develop after him. He could be a God because... He doesn't have a mother, I mean a father. He was born miraculously. Maybe his father is God, this and that. So they, they begin to develop theology about Jesus Christ being the son of God. And on and on and on, trying God. And he was this and that. And just so many confusion. That is why when the Quran came, the Quran began to expound who Jesus Christ actually was as he walked the earth. And that is why his name, you know, was mentioned a lot. For the simple fact that he doesn't have a father makes him a god. Well, how about Adam? Adam does not have an earthly father. He doesn't even have a mother. So isn't he even more, you know, uh, 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 you know, in 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 all in position to become a greater god? If the criteria that those who claim that Jesus Christ is God by the simple fact that he doesn't have a father 
Adam have no mother and no father. He's a greater God because, you know, uh, Jesus Christ came just like uh, you and I through his mother. And we know how he came. God coming like that, subhanAllah. Glory be unto God. What kind of God is that? So based on that injunction, we begin to understand clearly the thinking of those who claim that Jesus Christ is God. That is the wrong concept. Christ never mentioned anything about that. We have another Superman in the Bible. The book of Hebrew, there is a man. Hebrew chapter one verse, chapter seven verse one, I believe. By the name Melchizedek. It says, for this Melchizedek, king or prince of the most high God, without mother, without father, without beginning, without end, make like unto the son of God. And he lived on earth eternally. Who is this? This attribute belongs to God Almighty. God is the only one that have no mother, no father, no beginning, no end. That is God. But there is a man, a superman, in the book of Hebrew, in the Bible, who have this same quality, without beginning, without end, without mother, without father. He existed. He even gave Abraham a tithe. He's called the prince of the most high God. Peace, prince of peace. Prince of Salam, peace, they call Melchizedek. Well, Jesus Christ, we know his beginning in the womb of his mother. And we know his end. According to Christian, apparently he died on the cross. And according to the Muslim, he was elevated up in the you know, heaven because if he died uh, through the hands of uh, his enemies, then he's become a false prophet. Because if he died, then hang on the cross, that means he's a false prophet. So based on that, Allah took him, Allah took him to the heavens. So in the case of Jesus Christ, we understand who he was. The true perspective of who Jesus Christ is can be found only in Islam. So if you are a non-Muslim, maybe a Christian, and if you read the Quranic book with you know, uh, open-minded and clear-hearted and hoping that Allah should, should, should guide you, definitely you will see the clear a clear cut a, a distinction that Christ is actually a human being, just like anybody else, but a human being par excellence. The Quran put Jesus Christ at par with the five most prominent prophets, Ulul Adam, you know, the most prominent five, starting from Nuh, Noah, Ibrahim, Abraham, Musa, Moses, Jesus, Isa, and Muhammad. These are the, five, the big five. He's among them. So from that angle, I don't know what that Indian priest was talking about when he said just the, for the fact that he doesn't have a father, he could be a god. You know, when we think deeply, we can see John the Baptist also does not have a father because his creation was a miracle at that time. His father, Zechariah, was weak, feeble at the time. So God gave him the enunciation that she, Elizabeth, she's going to have a baby. And she had the baby. God intervened. So he was also, you know, a, a, even though he had a father, but at the time that God gave the enunciation, Zachariah doesn't have to meet with his wife, Elizabeth, to have, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, John the Baptist. Why don't you mention all that? So having become a human being based upon uh, just a mother without any male intervention didn't start from Jesus Christ, from Adam, even Isaac. You remember when Abraham was so very old and Sarah was very old and the angel who was on his way to um, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah stopped by Abraham. Yeah? You remember that story? So God promised Sarah that next year I will do, next year I will, I will do what I promised unto you and you would have a son. I don't know what God promised to do to her. He doesn't have to do something to her. But the language God promised to do something to her and she would have a son also. So there was no any, you know, uh, 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 co uh, cohabitation uh, between uh, 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 Sarah and Abraham. But yes, yeah, she became pregnant. God does a lot of wonderful things on the way he brought people, you know, even in the Quran, Allah said he could bring, you know, a uh, 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 creation out of rocks, out of nothing, out of nowhere, out of nothing. Look, Adam was created with dust, with dust. He was created. Eve had a father, so to speak, because she came from Adam. She had no mother. So you see, Adam, no mother, no father. Eve, she had father, no mother. You and I have mother and father. Jesus Christ have mother, no father. Allah created 
anyhow, any way he wants. That is the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I don't know what that guy is talking about. Then he's mentioned about uh, uh, the miracle of Jesus. He does so many miracles for the simple fact that he did miracle that makes him a God. According to what the guy said, you know, that pastor or that priest from India, he was being interviewed by a woman. I know you know that video was running all over town. He did miracle and Muhammad didn't do any miracle. He forgot that a lot of prophets did so many miracles. The miracle of Moses is even greater out of a vegetable kingdom. He make it to become what? Out of vegetable, which is a steak. It, he make it to become animal kingdom. Become a snake. Swallowed all the snakes in the house of Pharaoh and then back again to vegetable kingdom. That is a miracle indeed. An outstanding miracle by Moses. With that stick, Moses parted the Red Sea, and the sea was open. They passed through it. Isn't that a miracle? Uh, Daniel was thrown into the den of lion. The lion didn't eat him. That is a greater miracle. Joshua, he looked to the heaven when the Israelites were fighting a, 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 some nation. J Joshua prayed to God Almighty to let the sun to stay for 24 hours. The sun dial didn't move an inch for 24 hours and he was able to fight I think the Amalekite or the Jebusan I don't know, I forgot the, the, the Israelites were fighting then 24 hours, the sun didn't move did he do it? ask him who does that Joshua, he did that God gave him the power to do it so miracle is nothing so Jesus said for there shall arise many false prophets and false Christ who will show you many great wonders and signs if possible, they will deceive my elected disciples I think it's Matthew 24, 24, where Jesus said, For there shall arise many false prophets and false Christ. Today we see many false prophets and false Christ doing wonders in place of worship. Wonders. Are they God then? So miracle is not a test. Miracle of Jesus is it doesn't belong to him. Ask him. But before we ask Jesus Christ, let's ask Peter, the leader of the disciple of Jesus Christ. What did uh, uh, Peter say? This can be found in the book of Acts of the Apostle, Acts 22, verse 2. 2.22, right. Act of the Apostle. What happened there? You ask Peter. Simon, Peter, the rock. He said, ye men of Israel, hear this word. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, a man, not a God, a man approved by God amongst you with wonders and miracle and sign which God did upon him. The other Bible says, which God did by him. A man amongst you, O Jerusalem, O Israelites, which God did the miracle upon him, chosen by God with wonders and miracle and sign which God did unto him. He didn't do it. So miracle is nothing. David Copperfield, he did so many miracles. If he lived at the time of Jesus, people will worship him as a God. Right? There is this guy, something Blaine, George, George Blaine or Blaine or something. He walk around New York City. He traveled all over the world. And he, he even walked on water. River Thames in London, he walk on water. At the time, look, if he lived at the time of Jesus, people will worship him as a God. So miracle is nothing. The only miracle is without any miracle, you transform nations. That is what Muhammad did. Which miracle you saying? Okay, forget about the physical miracle. See how Muhammad transformed nations. Nations solving the problem that is eating deep in the fiber of societies all over the world. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So which miracle are you talking about? Ask him. John chapter 5 verse 30. What happened? Jesus said, I can of my own self do nothing. The way I hear, I judge. And my judgment is good because I do not seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Did you hear that? Hello? The will of the Father who sent me. So if I send you, who are you? A messenger. We send messengers. That's what the Quran said. For over 1,400 years, Inna mal Masih, Isa bunu Maryam, Rasulullah. Most certainly, Jesus Christ, the son of Mary, is a messenger of God. He said that in Matthew 5.30. Whom you send, I can of my own self do nothing. I can. I can do nothing. John 14.28. Jesus said, my father is greater than I. My father is greater than all. If you believe in me, it is not me that you believe. It is the father 
Him who sent me, it is him that you believe because I'm doing the bit of my father. What are you talking about? He's doing miracle. Which miracle are you talking about? So that guy, that, 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 that Indian priest, whoever he was, that claimed that he used to be a Muslim imam, but now he, uh, he became a Christian based on the fact that Christ was mentioned 25 times more than Muhammad. Subhanallah. That is so weak. This is, this is you know, uh, uh, insipid. So very insipid. That argument does not have a stand, a leg to stand upon. So the miracle is absolutely nothing. Because of by virtue of miracle, as Jesus Christ. It is so many miracles. The genius amongst you will say, okay, Mr. Muhammad Awo, uh, uh, Lazarus died. He died completely. The soul is out of his body. Giving up the ghosts. According to you, in the book of John chapter 11, the whole John 11 is talking about Jesus Christ and Lazarus. What happened to that? He raised Lazarus from the dead. So that makes him a God, according to you. Well, I know. It is God Almighty's prerogative to raise someone who died. No human being will be able to raise anyone from the dead. But you keep telling me in the podium, Christ rose him, uh, uh, he, you know, he brought back Lazarus from the dead. By virtue of that, that priest from India, he's saying that Jesus Christ is God because nobody does that. He even said that Jesus Christ, he made a bird with a clay and he blew into you know uh, the bird and the bird became alive and he you know and and and, and you know and it just fly away who does that who 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 gave anything to life if not god so he could be a god he forgot the book of uh, uh act of the quoted when uh, peter said uh, uh, uh god did all the miracle and signed by him where matthew 5 30 jesus said i cannot do it it is god who gave me the power to do all this and what i'm doing i can of my own self do nothing Except God gave it to me. So whatever he does, we believe it that but as a miracle given the permission by God Almighty. In the Quran used that be is in the law that Jesus Christ, he raised the dead. Be is in the law by the permission of God Almighty. He made the people to, uh, he tell the people what they ate in their house. Be is in the law by the power of Allah. He did whatever he did as a miracle that we behold in our eye. The Quran said, be is in the law by the power of Allah. And Jesus corroborated what the Quran have said by saying, I can of my own self do nothing except what God asked me to do. So whatever he doing as a miracle, he didn't do it on his own. Moses did the miracle. Why don't you say Moses is God because he parted the Red Sea? Who, who gave it to him? All the miracles belong to God. So Jesus even said, I've quoted that, for there shall arise many false prophets and false Christ who will show you many great wonders. So miracle is nothing at all. Okay, let's get back to um, Joshua. I mean, uh, Lazarus. Lazarus is dead. Jesus brought him back to life. What happened was that, just to cut it short, when Lazarus came to that village and he visited Lazarus, they ate bread, they sit down and they talk and they do a lot of stuff. And he left. The village for four days. So the fourth day, Jesus Christ said, let's go back to, um, you know, the village and see about our brethren. So when he came, before he came after four days, Lazarus is dead, buried, long time ago. The Jewish are like Christian in terms of burial. If you die the same day, they bury you. So he was buried. So when he was buried, Jesus, for four days, Jesus Christ walked in the village again. And Martha, the sister of Lazarus, she heard that the master is in town. So she ran to the gate of the city. To meet Jesus Christ and to tell him that his friend Lazarus is dead. So when she told him, he said to her, Martha, he's not dead. He will come back to life. She said, yes, master. I know he will come back to life in the day of judgment. Jesus said, no, Martha. Even now, if you have faith, you will see the glory of God. Where did you bury him? Where did you lay him? She said, it's in the sepulchre. So he said, a sepulchre is a carved out roomy chamber where they hew and put a human being inside. Sort of like a grave. And they put a stone at the entrance of that, uh, you know, um, uh, the sepulchre or the grave. So when he went there, on the way going, listen to what Jesus was saying. He was communicating with God Almighty, but those around him could not understand what he was saying because it was so, you know, high frequency. You know, it's a spiritual cry. So the Bible said, and Jesus groaned in the spirit, meaning, oh my father, he will flower, she will Lazarus. He was praying to God, but the people around him, they couldn't understand what he was saying. The word they used, he was groaning in the spirit. And the, 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 the next verse said, and Jesus wept. He wept. He was buried inside communicating with God. 
So they say, and Jesus wept. That is how deep he was, praying to God Almighty to give him the power to bring Lazarus back to life. So when he get the assurance, Jesus cried, when he get the assurance, maybe God might have said, Jesus, is that all you want? All right, go ahead. So when he get the permission, the, you know, the assurance, he said, remove the stone at the entrance of the sepulcher. They moved the stone away. He looked in the sepulcher and he said, Salisa kumni Lazarus. In the Hebrew word meaning, arise, O Lazarus. Kum in Arabic and Hebrew mean arise. Get up. So Lazarus came back to life. Those people who were standing by this, oh my God, Jesus must be God. What? For four days, this man was buried in the sepulcher. Jesus brought him back to life. He's got to be a God. Everybody was saying things. Jesus was listening. He didn't say anything. Jesus said, remove the bandage around him. They removed the bandage. Lazarus sat down. Now, listen to what Jesus said after Lazarus came back to life. Jesus looked towards the heaven. Now, he wants to give thanks. To God Almighty, who gave him the power to bring him back to life. He said, oh my father, I know that thou hearest me. And I know that thou hearest me always. Always, meaning whatever I'm doing, my miracle is you. I know that thou hearest me always. But I'm saying this loudly so that these people may know that thou are doing the works. Allahu Akbar. Where did Jesus brought Lazarus back to life? Nowhere. Nowhere. What is miracle you talking about? Which miracle? Show me one miracle performed by Jesus himself. And in fact, by the way, uh, this priest, whoever his name is, um, of India, that make this statement, there's a lot of Muslim brothers are asking me to rebut him and rebut him. Today we're doing it. And so... I want to challenge, I'm, I'm putting up a challenge to Mario Joseph. Since, yeah, that was the name, I believe. He had a book. He got a book. The book is the, the Bible. Since you have a book, let's dig in your book and dig in the Quran. All the argument that you have with the Quran, bring all the relevant verses, and I'm going to bring all the relevant verses from the Bible. Let's talk. So this is a challenge. Peaceful challenge. That is what the uh, Islam asks us. Say, O Muhammad, to the people of the book. Let us have a dialogue between us and you. Allah, na abuda illallah. We worship none but Allah. We don't associate any partner with Him. We don't take no one from amongst ourselves to worship Him towards Allah. If you tell them this and they refuse, tell them you've submitted your will to the one God that deserves to be worshipped. So sitting down and have a dialogue, you know, or a debate, peaceful debate, because the Quran gave us how to do it. Invite them all to the way of Allah with wisdom and beautiful preaching. So I'm inviting you for a debate. You call the shot any, any country that you are. Any country that you are, say you will accept this debate. Let's have a debate or a dialogue. If you're listening to me, I'm throwing a debate for you on the same the topic that you would like to debate upon. I'm ready, 24 hours. I'm ready already. And you know how to find me. I'm all over the place. On Facebook, on the internet, everywhere. Smash house and everything. You just put my name on and my story will come. Yeah, give us a call. Let us talk. So we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't think like that. And so he says something about Kalimatullah. Kalimatullah. Jesus is the word of Allah. Kalimatullah. You know, it's very sad. This man is claiming that he is uh, an Arab speaker, an imam. He have a whole masjid to take care of. And he study Mantik and Balaga and Arabic. And you couldn't, you know, Jesus referring in the Quran as Kalimatullah. He said, the Quran said, Jesus is the word of Allah. Kalimatullah doesn't mean the word of Allah. The word from Allah. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why you're saying that. Oh, are you saying that to score, score some... That's a cheap point, man. It's a cheap point. You're scoring a point to your Christian you know, uh, people. So they'll say, oh, man, he knows exactly what he's talking about, right? Is that what, why you say that? Why did you mistranslate the word Kalimatullah? 
It doesn't mean the word of Allah. The word from Allah. فَإِذَا قَدَا عَمَرًا فَإِنَّمَا يَقُولُ لَهُ كُمْ فَيَكُونَ If Allah, Al-Araq, if Allah will something, He just say to it, be and it becomes. Exactly that's what Allah used that word in the Quran. You know, in the Masala Isa in the Lahi Kamasali Adam. Halakahu min turabin, thumma kaala lahu kum fayakun. The similitude of Jesus Christ is that of the Adam. He said unto him, be. And he was. When Allah, you know, uh, uh, with the dust of Adam to be created, when Allah done, Allah said, be. And he became. Kun fayakun. Jesus said the same thing. Kun fayakun. And he became Jesus Christ in the womb of his mother. The same word was used to John the Baptist as Kalimatullah. Again, the word from Allah, not the word of Allah. Why are you saying the word of the word of Allah? Not from Allah. It's from Allah, my friend. Go back and learn your Arabic. I don't know. Where, which, which masjid did you preach in? I don't know. I want to know that masjid. And do you speak Arabic for real? No, even the basic Arabic, you know, stated person could understand that Kalimatullah doesn't mean the word of Allah. It means the word from Allah. Kalimatullah, the word from Allah. The Quran is the word. Again, we can use the Quran as Kalimatullah. The word that comes from Allah make it the Quran. You know what I'm saying? The same thing applies to the spirit from Allah, not the spirit of Allah. The Quran used the spirit from Allah. It is from Allah that the spirit left and it became whatever Allah will it to be. That is kun fayakun. Like in the book of Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. And God said, let, let there be light. The word let there be light is the word huh? from Allah. That word came, and God will it, and it became light. But it is not God who became the light. It is the word from God. Why are you mistranslating the word? Scoring points with your Christian brethren? I don't know why you would lie. Claiming that you know Arabic language very well. So let's have a talk. And then he mentioned that Jesus Christ is the only Messiah. He looked in the Quran. There is not a single person giving that title Messiah in the Quran. So the fact that he was giving the Messiah, you know, like Messiah, he's the Messiah, he is God. Nobody have the name Messiah. What is the meaning of Messiah? Messiah, simply innocent word in the Hebrew language means to select, to anoint, to appoint. It's a simple word. All messengers were selected were anointed and were given a special job to perform messiah in masih most certainly the messiah he was selected and anointed in the house of israel number one to be the last prophet and messenger sent from the house of israel preparing a way for the noble messenger to come after him who will be sent for the whole of mankind so the word messiah simply means to anoint to appoint he was appointed he was anointed who appointed abraham so Abraham was the Messiah also. But that title is specific for Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Who is Khalilullah? Who is Khalilullah? Khalilullah in Arabic means the friend of Allah. Who is it? Ask any Muslim. He will say, Ibrahim. How about Jesus? <laughs> You see a friend of Allah? Yes. Muhammad, friend of Allah? Yes. Isaiah, all of them were friend of Allah. But that title is specific for Ibrahim, being Khalilullah. The same thing that Messiah is a special title for Jesus Christ, but all of them are Messiah. Who is Kalamullah? Ask any basic Muslim. Who is Kalamullah? They will say, Musa or Moses is the Kalamullah. What's that supposed to mean? The, you know, uh, the one that Allah spoke with. Didn't God spoke to Abraham? Didn't he speak to um, Muhammad? Didn't God spoke to Jesus Christ? He speak to all of them. So that particular word is akin to be given to Musa, Kalamullah. But they are all Kalamullah. So the Messiah is not exclusive that he is the Messiah. Nobody knows. They are all Messiah. But it's a title applicable to him alone. Just like being, you know, Kalamullah, a title being given to Moses. Again, ask the Muslim brethren, any Muslim, the weakest amongst them, who is Rasulullah? Ask any Muslim, who is Rasulullah? He will say, Muhammad. What is Rasulullah? The messenger of Allah. Isn't Moses the messenger of Allah? Yes, Abraham, Noah, Jesus, all of them messengers of Allah. But that title is specific for Muhammad, Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So if, if, if his Messiah doesn't make him so special Messiah, you know how they call it the Messiah, like some kind of a God. No, uh, all of them were Messiah. Then you should go and do some more research, man. I don't believe that, uh, you know, uh, you are an imam. I don't believe that at all because imams don't speak like that. And those who specialize on their Bible, reading deep into it, they don't even talk like that. So I don't know why you're speaking like that. So clearly, Mr. Priest from India, exactly you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're talking about. The other argument he raised was Jesus Christ is coming back. Muhammad is not coming back. Moses is not coming back. Isaiah is not coming back. All of them, none is coming back. <coughs> Excuse me. None of them is coming back. So Jesus Christ is coming back. Muhammad is not coming back. That makes him a God. Why? Because you say he died. He conquered death and he came back to life. So if he come back to life again, is he going to die again? If he die again, that means God have died twice again. The Bible said it is ordained for all mankind to die once and the next is resurrection. So Jesus Christ is dead according to you. The Muslims say no. They did not kill him. They did not crucify him. Then, the, then the, 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 that Indian guy, he said, Jesus Christ said in the Quran chapter 3, he even quoted the verse that Jesus uh, said, uh, He said, you see, Jesus Christ, uh, peace be upon me, the day I was born, the day that I died, and the day that I will rise up again. It sounds like that is the truth, but... The, he mutilated the English, I mean the Arabic language. I don't understand if he was lying when he said he knew the Arabic. Was salamu alayya yawma walidu. Yes. Peace be upon me the day I was born. Jesus said that. Wa yawma amutu. And the day that I die in the future. He was speaking about the future, not the day that I died. And he said the day that I died. How can someone who died, <laughs> he said that the day that I die again. Wayoma Uba Suhaya, the day that I will rise up again. The correct translation is the day that I die. Not that the day that I died. He didn't die. Wayoma Amutu. Do you speak Arabic? The day that I died. Not died. He was speaking about his future. Telling them in Israel, peace be upon me. The day that I was born, yes, I have peace. And he was speaking the day that I die also. In the future, I will have peace. In the day that I will rise up again. That is the clear translation. I don't know why you are mutilating the language. You are, you say you're on the, look man, I want to debate you. Man, this is a, look, I'm serious man. I want to debate you. You could find me. If I know how I'm going to find you, I will do that. But go find me. Write me a letter. Send a text. Something. Let's meet. I don't know where you are. India. You were in continental, you know, South South Asia, wherever you are. You were in England, you were in Germany, you were in France, you were in America. Wherever you are, I'm going to come in a heartbeat. So we will debate that openly. Let the people decide. You're not going to hide them behind some woman asking you questions and you giving answers and that's it. That's why it's good to think. Use your God-given bodily sense and mental powers to process each and every information. So Jesus coming back doesn't make him a God. The fact that he's coming back is a proof that he didn't die. So if you look at the Quranic history or the Quranic chronography about him, the person of Jesus Christ, it makes a lot of sense. He's coming back because he didn't die. He's going to live and maybe get married or something and then he's going to die. And then it will be resurrection. That's what we believe. It's just simple, rational, straightforward, unambiguous statement. Which you mutilate it and you kind of make it, you demystifying it. You are not saying the truth. You are lying to the Quran, lying to the history of Islam. He made mention about um, uh, I and my father are one. Yes, I remember that. He said, I and my father are one. Jesus said that. I and my father are one. So that means Jesus is God. He said when he started studying the Bible, he realized all this information that in the Bible, you know, Jesus said, I and my father are one. And to say I and my father are one, it means I and my father are one. Jesus would never make a statement, you know, of untruth. So he believed what Jesus said. I and my father are one. 
I, 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 I have read that in the Bible. Jesus said, I and my father are one. But what is the context? What you have quoted is the text. What is the before and after? The statement. Let's put that as a text. The before and after. If you read that, it makes a lot of sense for Jesus to make those statements. So I believe he made those statements. I and my father are one. Full stop. But why would he make a statement like that? You have to understand that. You have to read the before and the after. So what you did is, is fraud quotation. Fraudulent. You know, we call that in compatible religion contextualization. You take it out of context. John to the 10 verse 30. I and my father are one. I'm going to read that from my head. But we're going to start from John 23 verse 30. See if we will understand why he said, I and my father are one. And Jesus walked in the Solomon's temple alone. I don't even know why he's walking in the Solomon temple alone. Tempting the devil. Because he's in trouble at that time. They're looking for him. And he went there alone. The Bible said that. And he was in alone. So the Jewish, they saw the chance to give him a bashing. Then they came and surrounded him. And they say unto him, If thou art the Christ, tell us plainly, Thou being a man, make it that's not a God. Then Jesus said, I have told you, and you don't believe in me. My sheep, meaning my disciples, they hear me and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. If you don't believe in me, believe in the works that I do. Look at what I'm doing. I don't charge people if I do any miracle. I don't charge them. It's for free. I even pray for them. But you guys, you charging them. You don't believe in me? Look at the work that I do. I don't charge them. Look at me. My life is like a book written all over. Everybody could read it. Mm. My sheep, they hear my voice and they follow me. The disciple, these are the sheep. And he's the pastor. The pasture, he's the head. And this is the flock. They hear my voice and they follow me. And I give them eternal life. And my father, who gave them to me? Who? Who are the them? The disciple. My father, who gave them to me, is greater than all of you, these people. The Jewish people, unbelievers. And no one amongst you can take them out of my father's hand, who is the disciple. Neither can you take them, my disciple, out of my hand. Because I and my father are one. Allahu Akbar. Did you see why he said that? Did you see? Look, in, he was talking about the purpose of his being on earth is to reform the people of Israel, the disciple. He gave them to me and they follow me and you can't take them out of my hand because my purpose and God's purpose is one. I and my father are one. You know, I can say, I, Muhammad and God Almighty are one. Innocently, but we don't use those phrases for you to have a different idea because those words are not spiritually inclined to the message given to God Almighty for the whole of mankind. But so far to say, if Jesus used it, if he used it, I and my father are one. But if you look at the content, what he meant was, God Almighty want to reform the people. Jesus Christ want to reform the people. Jesus Christ and God are one in purpose. Not in power and glory, omnipotent and omniscient. No, in purpose, they are one. Me, I know that my purpose and God Almighty is one. So I and God Almighty are one in purpose. No, I'm not God, but our purpose is one. Why? Because I'm trying to reform the people. I'm trying to put the truth across the board so that everybody will understand and act upon it. God Almighty wants to see that that happen. This is the job of the prophet. So the purpose of them being sent by God Almighty to the, to the, to the, to the, to the mankind is one. So when verse 31, when Jesus Christ said that, they pick up a stone to throw him. And Jesus said, for which of this work are you stoning me? Then they say, for good work, we stone thee not, but for blaspheme, making thyself a God. He says, said, so they are accusing him of being God. He said, saying of him whom the Father has sanctified from heaven, that I have blasphemed? Is it not written in your law, since you are arguing with me, that because I say I am the Son of God? Is it not written in your law? He was quoting Isaiah 86, 84. Is it not written in your law? Look at your law, your book, that God said, I, you know, is it that, 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 that I have made thee, God have made thee, that I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh. O Israel, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh. I have made thee a God. You are a human being, but I have made thee a God. It's their language. Just like in the book of uh, Exodus, I think, 
7 verse 1, when God said to Moses, Moses, I have made thee a God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron, thine brother, shall be your prophet. Why is it that the Jewish don't worship Jesus, uh, Moses as a God? So you see, saying of him whom the Father have sanctified from heaven and brought down to earth, that I am blasphemed? No, I'm calling myself a son of God. Is it not in your law that I say ye are gods? God is calling the Israelites, all of you are gods. But you would die. You are God of the Most High, but you would die just like anybody because you are a human being. Where did Jesus say, I am my Father, I God? To the extent that he is <laughs> So you see, and then Mr. Mario somehow, he quoted John chapter 1 verse 1. John 1 1. To prove that Jesus Christ is indeed God. And it began by saying, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word became God and dwelt amongst us. That's Jesus Christ. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word became flesh. So Jesus Christ became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So he was talking about the, from the very beginning was the Word. And I'm saying that is a wrong statement to make about God Almighty. How can the Word exist without it being spoken? Words cannot exist without it being spoken. Someone might have spoken the word for it to exist. My word can never exist unless I speak it out. Unless it's been spoken for it to exist. They are in my video, on, my, on, my, on, my, on Facebook. Those are my words. They exist in there because I spoke them. So God has to have spoken the word for it to exist. Because word cannot exist by, by, by themselves. Who spoke the word? God. So how is it that in the beginning was the word? No, that's the wrong statement. In the beginning was God Almighty who spoke the word for the word to exist. The word is the kun for your kun. Become star, the moon, stars, heaven, earth, plant. This, these are the word of God. God, it manifested from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The word that came from God Almighty. So that is a very unbelievable misconception about God Almighty, and then he also said that he enjoyed the Bible because the, in the Quran, God refers to us human beings as the slaves of God. We are the slaves of God. But the Bible is, is talking about, you know, I don't know if you know the Bible very well. This is not a time. You know, I want a debate from you. Let's have a debate. Then I'm going to explain to you the word slave in your book. This is not the occasion. I'm in a hurry to get through, to sift through what you just said. Try to give, you know. Uh, 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 you know, basic answer to it until if you agree to debate me, that will be beautiful. Take any continent on the face of the earth, you want to debate, I'm, I'm going to be there, inshallah. So now he's talking about the Quran said, uh, we the human beings are slaves of God Almighty, but in the Bible, he said, we are the sons of God Almighty. He said, son, we are the son or the children of God Almighty. And he began to quote some quotation, you know, in the book of Genesis, chapter 4, verse 22, where God said, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. You know, the word son in, 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 in Islam is a stew. Because the, child, the son, children, are, uh, are doing a lot of things that is not good. Just like the word, uh, the word gay. It's a beautiful word. Look at that in dictionary. Beautiful. It means happy and joyous. Oozing with goodness and this and that. That is gay. It's a beautiful word. Is happy and gay and joyous. But today, the world have taken another turn to a different meaning. So if you are, uh, oh, he's happy and gay, somebody's going to get angry. Oh, are you happy and gay? He's going to get angry at you. But innocently from the beginning, the word is good. But the word have been turned into a very distasteful word. So in Islam, we eschew those words. Like the word communism. In communism, the word comrade Look at dictionary. It means friend, right? It's a very innocent word. It's my comrade. It's my pal. It's my friend. That's what it means. Give you different meaning of, you know, comrade. But today, if you live in America and all, oh man, what's up, comrade? How you doing, man? It's been a long time I'm speaking to you. What's going on? Let's just hang around a little bit, comrade. Wallahi, if you keep saying this word on your telephone, FBI might be at your doorstep any minute because the word comrade have been turned into be a communist type of word that you know, in America, we don't accept that. Even though from the very beginning, the etymology of the word is very innocently used. 
So you see how words do change. The same thing applies to uh, a father. The moment you see the word father, you know, it gives you a connotation of uh, someone, even though he doesn't have a wife, but it gives you an idea. Because not all of us think the same. People would think, okay, God have a son. He may have a wife. Maybe there's a wife up there, Jesus Christ, the son of God. No. In the book of Genesis, God has so many sons. In the book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter, chapter, chapter uh, I think, 91 verse 4 or or 31 verse 9, it's a, God have so many sons. In the book of John chapter 1 verse 12, God have so many sons. In the book of many, 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 the book of Chronicles, you know, uh, Solomon is the son of God. Yeah, in so many places. So that's that, that physical. But in Islam, we eschew those words. 99 attributes of God Almighty in Islam with the crowning name Allah to make 100. Never one to be called Abba. You know, Rabb. And Abba. Which one is easy? Abba is easy. Rab. Abba. Rab. It's harder to mention. Rab. You know, Abba. But not a single word in the Quran referring to God, the word Abba. Easy. No. It's been in Allah gave it the word Rab, the Lord, our cherisher and sustainer. So now. He said he preferred the word son. The Bible used that, that there's a relationship between God Almighty and Allah. Which relationship do you have with God Almighty? He's your creator. He's your creator. The slave of Allah. It is a humble name. To humble yourself is a humbling name. The messenger said, do not over praise me. Just like the people of Jesus Christ over praise him. They call him uh, the, uh, 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 the word of God, you know, the man of God, you know, the rabbi. They call him teacher. They call him Lord. They call him son of God. Now they blow it up. They call him a God, God Almighty. So the moment you begin to elevate his name, Muhammad said, call me by the name or the appellation that God has given me. I'm the messenger of God, prophet of God, and the slave of God. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That is what the Joseph guy said. That is why he said. So he said, um, Jesus, he said, uh, um, he made the, I'm trying to remember the statement he made again. He said, okay, I remember. He said, um, uh, Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but through me. But the simple fact that yeah, he, Jesus Christ made those statements that makes him a God. Now you can't go to heaven unless you pass through Jesus Christ. Muhammad never made those statements. Which, again, I have reasons to believe that this man was not uh, a Muslim. Not even a, uh, an imam. No way. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one goes to the Father but through me. Jesus is the only one that says that. Must all the prophets say that for you, them, for you to believe at the time of Moses? Who was the way? Hello, at the time of Moses, who was the way? There was no Jesus. And he came to some people. He was the way. They followed him. He was the way, Moses. He was the truth because whatever God revealed unto him in the Torah was the truth. They follow it. And no one at the time of Moses would go to heaven without following the rules and regulation and the ordinances and the statutes given by God Almighty to Moses. You can't go to heaven unless you follow Moses. So Moses was the way, yes. He was the truth, yes. And no one go to heaven except he followed Moses. The same is true with Abraham and Moses and Isaiah. All of them, they were the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus didn't say, I'm the only way. Did he say that? Did he say, I'm the only way? No. If he had said, I am the only way, then that would be a, you know, a little bit of problematic. But Jesus Christ, he knows better. He didn't say that. I am the way. Yes, the time that he existed, he was the way. He was the truth because God gave him the truth, the revelation of the truth. God gave it to him. That's the Injil, the Evangel, the good news. And no one at the time of Jesus will opt to go to heaven without following that Jesus Christ is, you know, uh, the truth. And he said he doesn't believe that because Muhammad, because uh, uh, Muhammad was, uh, uh, Muhammad is not the way to turn the light. And I'm I'm surprised I'm, I'm I'm surprised that um he didn't even mention about the fact that in the Quran Allah explained as in the Quran that Muhammad is the way it's there in the Quran but he said he couldn't find that in the Quran but Jesus said the statement calling yourself man please he says an imam giving a whole masjid he studied Arabic he studied Mantic he studied falsafa he studied 
you know, the law of Islam. He studied jurisprudence. He studied, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, Sharia. And he studied Arabic. And he studied Hadith. You know everything he said. Yet he couldn't find a single word in the Quran. Let me tell you today. Kul in kuntum tuhibbuna Allah fattabi'uni ihibbukum Allah wa yafil lakum zunuba. That's what Allah said. If you love Allah, Allah said, follow Muhammad. He is the way. You see, Muhammad didn't say he's God. He's the way. Of course, his way leads to eternal life. Just like what Jesus said, if I go, the comforter will come after me. And when he comes, he will talk about righteousness and sin because he was, you know, to come after me. He also said, it is expedient that I go away. If I don't go, the comforter will not come. If he, that means he didn't come. The comforter will not come. I have to go. If I go, he will come. If I don't go, he won't come. And if he come, he will reprove the world and talk about righteousness and sin. Whatever he speaks, so shall he be told. And he will declare unto you all things that are to come, and he will glorify me. You didn't see that one? You didn't see. So what you do with your own book is you pick and choose. You are picking and choosing exactly what you want people to understand. That's exactly what it is. So me, what I'm trying to say to you, those who have watched the video, is to discount that. I think I've given a lot of rationale. You know, most of, I, most of what he said, I can't even think of them, but I think I've given 90% of what he said. So now he's a Christian, and so he's, uh, uh, he's going to eternal life. Jesus died for him. The blood of Jesus has cleansed him. Meanwhile, there is not a single place where Jesus said that his blood is going to cleanse you except what was put in the mouth of Jesus. Because we know the verses that Jesus said. We know the verses that came after Jesus Christ left the earth, which was inserted in their book. And it makes it look like Jesus said that. He didn't say none of those words. The book of Isaiah, the, the book of uh, uh, Jeremiah, chapter 18, verse 20 said, All souls are mine. God Almighty speaking. All souls are mine. The soul that sinned it shall die. The father will not bear the iniquity of the son, nor the son bear the iniquity of the, of, the, of, the, of the father. The wickedness of the wickedness shall be upon him, and the righteousness shall also be upon him. But if the wicked turn around and do that which is good, God Almighty will blot his sin, he will not remember it, and he will be admitted into heaven. This is the law of God. That God cannot forgive mankind for whatever they did, Somebody have to die for you, innocent. Why didn't God go and die instead of sending your old son? That is child abuse. If it's in America, that person will be arrested. In any country at like that. Why would you shove your son under the bus to go and die? An innocent son who did nothing. You say he's uh, sinless. Sinless. Okay, Jesus died for you. Okay, look at the sin that has been perpetrated today in many, 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 many places of worship. Look at how children are being raped. In the place of worship. Look at how women have been raped in the place of worship. You know what I'm talking about. According to Reader's Digest, this is, this is negligible in Islam. Negligible. Ne ab absolutely negligible. But it is happening in other religions. What sin are you talking about? The soul that sinned, it shall die. So God cannot say, okay, Adam, you've committed a crime. I mean, you know, Adam, you eat the apple. I cannot forgive you. You know, you eat an apple, Adam. Man, I, I just can't forgive you. I, I don't know if I'm going to forgive you, Adam, because you ate the apple. The only way I'm going to forgive you is I'm going to wait for some time and I'm going to enter into the womb of some woman, a Jewess. And then she's going to give birth to me. And then my own creation will arrest me, beat me up, hang me on the cross like some kind of a barbecue. Then I'm going to forget and forgive. Does that make a lot of sense? It doesn't make sense. I don't want that kind of salvation. You, it's like saying, you go and commit a crime and Jesus Christ go to jail for you. Does that make sense? No. Or you drink wine. Jesus Christ move around stumbling and boozing for you. Does that make sense? Or you have a headache. Christ take the tablets for you. Does it make sense? No. Let me give you an example. If you and your twin brothers, so identical twins, so very identical, so close, nobody could even tell. Sometimes the parent can't even tell. The voice, the walk, the look, the everything the same, identical. So twin number one commit a crime and he ran away. And the police came to the house and they saw twin number two. And twin number two said, okay, oh, well, I, my brother commit it. So why don't you take me instead? Take me in. I'm going to save they say, are you crazy? We're looking for twin number one. If you do the crime, you do the time. 
This is how we think. So what do you think God Almighty will allow someone who is innocent to go? Look, this is celestial injustice. If this is true what happened according to your story, it is celestial injustice. It didn't happen like that at all. So Islam is very rational. In Medina, in the Lahil Islam, Islam have played the responsibility on your lap. All the facts have been given. But we who want to follow the right, let him follow. He who want to go wrong, let him go wrong. But there's going to be a time that Allah will bring everything into fruition. Because according to Islam, we know the angel of God Almighty, they're all over around us. The angel of goodness writing good stuff on the right, angel of, you know, writing bad on the left. So if you commit any crime, you commit any crime, the angel on the left is not going to write it right away. He's going to give you time to repent, you know, Tawbat and Nasuha, make repentance. You know, if you don't, then they write only one. But if you do anything that is good, the angel of mercy will write it right away. Once they write it right away, they, they begin to multiply it from 1 to 10 to 100 until what God will. So why, how, how can you go to hell if you are an, indeed a good worshiper of God Almighty? Yeah, you, you're going to be called Jesus Christ. Christ didn't set up Christianity at all. But what we do, Christ did. We pray five times a day. The Jewish were given a book and they pray three times a day, the morning, afternoon, and the evening. So you see Jesus Christ falling down in Matthew 26:39. He fall with his forehead and worship. I don't even know which religion does that. Fall on their forehead. Isaiah does that. Moses and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Aaron does that. And the son of Aaron, Eliza does that. Joshua, he did that in the book of Joshua. Abraham, in the book of Genesis, he does that. You know, Jehoshaphat, in the book of Chronicle, he does that. All of the prophets does that. They were circumcised. We were circumcised. Are you circumcised? Non-Muslim? No, you are not. So we follow Jesus Christ very closely. Our women, they put on the hijab, just like Mary and the nuns, they did. So who are you calling me? So if these are the things that we do to qualify us as Christian, that means we are more Christian than those who purport to call themselves Christians. Indeed. It has been explained to you so clearly. We don't eat pork. Jesus don't eat pork. We don't eat pork. He don't eat blood. We don't eat blood. He doesn't do all these things. We don't do. He put the same clothes we put. He leave beard. He put the same clothes. We do the same thing. And you laugh at me. He who laughed last always love the best you could laugh all you want but there's going to be a time that you're going to be biting your tongue so take islam total submission to the will of god peace in islam between yourself and your creator your environment and your human nature if you do that god almighty is going to have mercy on you make it easy for you so my brothers islam definitely and those of you who are not uh, muslim watching this program it's about time that i drop the curtain it's almost time i've spoken for about an hour and change and i would open the door for you to ask as much question as you can as we go to the day. So I'm going to give you a few minutes to ask your question. And Shafiu, can you um, put the, um, the number on so that those of you who want to join Zaytun Dawa Institute, they could uh, take that number and uh, join Zaytun Dawa Institute. You know, so I'm going to open the door. The door is open for you to ask your question. Yep. Uh, I think I've seen, I don't know what happened, but I've seen some flashy red, pinkish, you know, dotting on my uh, spiracles and some sparkles. I don't know. I hope it doesn't come on the main video. I've just seen it. I thought it's going to go away. Maybe I press. I don't know. So if you see it, please, my apology. Uh, this is an apology. We don't intend for that to happen. But somehow I'm going to I'm going to ask my technical man. Maybe I'm going to fire you. No, I'm not going to fire you. I'm not wrong. Wrong fire everybody. <laughs> so I'm not going to fire you. But Shafiu, uh, I know you're watching. Timothy, do your thing. Gwani, you guys are the tech man. So... Take care of that uh, if you could remove that i don't know why it came maybe my hand i don't know so i'm sorry uh, on, on behalf of zaytun dawa institute i'm sorry for that flashing that is coming upon so any question and the question should be written in the caps and sometimes if i don't answer your question please forgive me because it just moves so fast and by, before i answer your question another one is on another one is on and it just go away so definitely i'm going to stop here haza billahi tawfiq wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh I'll take the question. Um, I know you're watching from wherever you are. God bless and the mercy be upon you. Man, this, this 
spots, uh, sprinkling stars, pinkish, reddish, it's all over the place. I hope it's not on the main video. I hope so, but uh, I don't know what happened. You know, it looks like I put on some pancake on my face. No, I, I didn't do that. I'm sorry, man. I, <laughs> so I'm waiting for a few questions to take the few questions and then we are uh, going to roll the carpet. Uh, and uh, inshallah, next week again, we will do it again. Um, okay. Mahe Haruna, mashallah. Thank you very much uh, for the encouragement. The more you encourage, the more I get, the, um, the more is more grease to my elbow and I'm going to keep on doing my research and I'm going to bring it forward. And hoping that what we are saying, if we make something, we make any statement that is wrong, I hope that God, God Almighty will forgive and forget. And if I say something that is good, it's only the mercy of Allah that makes me to act like that. And I respect all of you, those who are watching me, Muslim and non-Muslim. And we are just one same people. The different line is so easily we can you know, um, cement it when we come to the table and sit down and uh, have a dialogue. Dialogue is very, very important. Yeah, we talk amongst ourselves, it's very, very important. The messengers did that. They didn't fight among themselves. They just live life, you know. So, okay, somebody's asking me, can a Muslim marry a Christian? Of course, Quran chapter 5 verse 5 said a Muslim man can marry a Christian woman after giving her the dowry, not seeking to do anything wrong, but something good. That is a good thing. In Islam, because by virtue of the Christian, we're giving book. So with that respect of the book, we actually um, can marry them. Yes, now. So uh, is there free will in Jannah if we are programmed to accept everything as it is? Well, in Jannah, you could do whatever you want to do. I'm just saying to my friend that the other day that if you see somebody causing trouble in, in, the, in heaven, in paradise, if you look carefully, it's going to be me because I'm going to be drinking wine. I'm going to be getting booze in heaven. I'm going to be acting up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not going to drink the wine in this world. In the heaven, I'm going to be the first. So if you see somebody in the club up there in the heaven having a good time and causing mayhem, that's me right there. <laughs> so yes, you know, yeah, you have a free will to do whatever you do. But at that time, whatever you do will be inclined to goodness. That whatever, there's, not, there's nothing wrong or bad in general. Whatever you do is going to be good. It's a, you're going to be spiritualized. You're not going to be like the same, you know, form like this. No. Fatima Adam Imam, thank you very much. When are you going to um, open the phone? I don't know. Sheikh Mohammed, what? Oh man, it's good. When are you going to Liberia? Pretty soon, inshallah. Less than a month, I'm going to be in Liberia, and um, we're going to have a very beautiful program. Those of um, I can't wait, man. Liberia is great. It's a very beautiful country. I've been there once, and I'm going to do it again. I can't wait. People cannot wait, so it's going to be fun. Mm. Uh, Okay, can a, can, can a Christian also marry a Muslim? Okay, a Christian man cannot uh, marry a Muslim because Islam, she's clean. He's clean. You don't drink, you don't gamble, you don't, you, know, you don't take wine, you don't stand and pee. So you are clean, the woman. So we expect that a man should be clean also to marry you. But a man, when he married a woman, eventually, since the man is the head of the house, he can talk to her and show her the way to the right religion. And that is okay. But a Muslim a woman can never marry uh, a non-Muslim man. If they do marry, that is not construed as marriage in Islam. It is something else, you know what I'm saying? So that's, 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 that's what's going on. All right. Um, uh, just also share the video and let it go as far as uh, it, can, it can go, you know, because uh, that's, that's, that's what's up. Inshallah. I hope everybody's doing okay. Hope you guys are doing fine. And I hope you've enjoyed the program. Uh, it's getting taught that uh, Islam mean Im Iman is weak. That's getting getting taught that are anti-Islam. I don't know what that means. If you are anti, most Islam means Iman and faith. Islam is someone who submits to the will. I don't expect the Muslim to stay being Muslim. Stay. You have to be a, a mu'min and you become a muhsin. Because if someone become a Muslim today, he's going to be at power with you. We are Muslim. No. Strive as, as, as much as you can in doing goodness. Then you become a mu'min. A mu'min is a higher stage than a, a Muslim. Then a muhsin is higher stage than a mu'min. So try to fight. Fatima Ahmed, Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum assalam. Thank you very much, Fatima. How are you doing? Um, I wish you all the best. And, um, uh, Inshallah, Allah make it easy for it. Hamidu, uh, Mashallah, to join our WhatsApp is there. Shafiu just who? Um, why are you 
when are you coming to Zambia? Musa Sidime. I'll be coming to Zambia if you speak to the Zambian Muslim community. They invite me, I'm going to come. I don't just go any place. I wake up and go. No, I have to be invited for me to go because I have to know where I'm going and I need security and stuff like that to be able to go to places. So, inshallah, talk to them and you know, yeah, I'll be there, inshallah. In fact, there's a lot of people from Zambia asking me when am I coming. So, I'm going to be speaking to um, Mufti Ming, hopefully. Maybe we could arrange something, inshallah, so I could just come and spend some few days with you and um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, uh, okay, somebody was asking me, I can't see from part of this sound. I say, if you want me to answer your question, you have to type it with uh, capital letters. Uh, I was asking me about messengers being questioned or something in the, the Day of Judgment. Of course, God Almighty was going to question everybody. Um, uh, all the prophets and messengers, they will stand with their own people and they, there's going to be a lot of witness as to whether they've delivered the message that God has given to them to deliver to the people. So definitely they're going to be questioned and that question is not going to be like you and I because are, these are messengers and prophets. They don't commit crime. They don't commit, uh, you know, they don't go against God Almighty. They don't commit sin. You know, sin is a willful act against the law of God. Messengers and prophets, don't do that. Now, Fatima Abba, mashallah, thank you very much. Um, I've given you that answer again. Um, um, so that's, 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 that's what's going on. I wish you all the best. Uh, it looks like I got two more minutes and I'm going to close right now. After two minutes, I'm going to uh, put the uh, curtains down. Ali Ibrahim, mashallah. Uh, Mokhudi Ali, a curse is someone who went and did something against that God Almighty and he, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allah Akbar, is Khalifa Idris. Allah make it easy for you. Share this video as much as you can. Let it go as far as you can. Uh, the blessings of doing that is uh, only Allah can give. Because what you are doing is also da'wah. Let there arise some men amongst you who will invite others into Islam. And now uh, we are in the social media era. The best that you can do is to let this video go viral and let everybody watch it as you're watching it right now and appreciating the fact that we are bringing the content into perspective and reality. So thank you very much for doing whatever you are doing. Um, check. We Nigerians are missing you. Muhammad, uh, definitely. Sheikh Muhammad, I will please try to phone line. Oh, man, how can I have your contact? Uh, person, I want to ask you. Okay, no problem. Um, uh, Shafi, you can give them the number. Is it going to be easy? Obligatory for your wife to spend all her income in the home? No, it is not obligatory for any housewife or a woman to spend her earnings. It is the job of the, of the husband. He's supposed to be giving her house you know, provide her the house, dwelling, provide clothing and food and everything. She's a queen. You know, in Islam, women are queen. Whatever she gets as a dowry, she keeps it to herself. You know, so she don't have to even spend. She, it's, it's, it's not a must to spend to her children. It is the job of the father. You know, she's supposed to look good, look nice, you know, watch live screen TV, you know, be good and nice and all looking. She's a queen. The man is the sufferer. Go, You, know, you want to be the leader of the house, man? That means you're going to go out and work, man. So in Islam, women are supposed to take care of them, but they have prayed for us on Isra and Mirad with the soul and Isra. I don't know, Ian Adams, I don't know the beginning of your question. You said, but they have prayed with the soul on Isra and Mirad. Are you talking about the prophet and messengers? Yes. Yeah, when the messenger was going, Quran chapter 17, Subhanallah, Asura bi abdihi. So he messenger, he met the messengers and they prayed together. What increased Muslim Iman? Uh, the messengers, they do their prayers, certain prayers that they do that... Uh, uh, we don't have it, but the main prayers was given when Muhammad went to Israel with Mirad, that's where he received the five prayers and eventually that's what we're doing. All messengers were given some form of prayers. The Jewish were given three prayers, morning, afternoon and evening. Uh, in the Quran, Allah have asked Moses to pray. Allah have asked Jesus to pray. Allah have asked Abraham to pray. Allah. So they have their own form of prayers. And so the culmination came after Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came to... Uh, so, okay, uh, best boy, Larry, what increases a Muslim uh, iman? Uh, what you increase your iman the quran said you believe in whatever happened is happened through allah's will nothing happened haphazardly by itself without the will of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because allah said each and every one of you is being programmed to some destination compete in doing goodness that means whatever you do can never come to you to do unless that which god have will and if you believe in that you believe in allah that's the iman not you have got to, that's the next iman the iman keep increasing you don't get angry you believe in whatever happened to you it's your destiny you believe in allah is watching everything and you know allah is watching you even though you don't see him if you can he sees you if you 
keep on doing that your iman will increase you know so i'm going to take one or two questions and then i'm going to go uh okay kanu abdullahi salam alaikum i'm from canada how can i get your contact okay, i'm going to give it once and i'm not going to give it again 206 354 0102 206 354 0102 or you could contact Shafiu also he just put he just put up the number out there so inshallah and if you call me I don't pick I don't it's very difficult for me to pick call because all the time I'm busy answering somebody on WhatsApp you know on Facebook this and that so if you call me you are defeating the purpose of taking the number but if you send me a message on on on, uh, on whatsapp definitely i'm going to respond to you i i'm always busy on whatsapp so with the quran recital okay that number is gone oh i gotta go inshallah allah make it easy for you and make it easy for me also